Let's be real, folks. The royal family's incompetence isn't just a minor hiccup. It's a full-blown circus act that we're all forced to watch while footing the bill. It's like we're paying for front-row seats to a never-ending comedy of errors. Except it's not funny when you realise the cost. I mean, seriously, who else gets a £45 million pay bump while the rest of us are scraping by? It's not just a pay bump. It's a slap in the face to every hard-working individual struggling to make ends meet. Imagine the outrage if any other public institution demanded such an increase amidst a financial crisis. It's like they're living in some parallel universe where the cost of living crisis is just a quaint little story they heard once. They parade around in their gilded cages, completely detached from the reality that the rest of us face daily. The disconnect is not just glaring, it's infuriating. And don't even get me started on their PR team deleting statements willy-nilly as if the internet hasn't been a thing for decades. It's almost laughable how they think they can erase their blunders with a simple click, ignoring the fact that the internet never forgets. Every misstep is documented, shared and scrutinised by millions. It's almost impressive how they manage to fumble every ball that's thrown their way, from botched website updates to tone-deaf displays of wealth. You'd think with all the resources at their disposal, they'd at least get the basics right. But no, they continue to stumble, making a mockery of their own image. At this point, their relevance is about as solid as a sandcastle at high tide. The tides of public opinion are shifting, and the once unshakable foundation of the monarchy is eroding. People are waking up to the absurdity of it all, questioning the very fabric of this outdated institution. Yet here we are, still expected to bow and scrape to this antiquated institution that can't even keep their own house in order. It's a relic of a bygone era, desperately clinging to relevance in a world that has moved on. The pomp and circumstance feel increasingly hollow, a facade that fails to mask the underlying dysfunction. It's high time we stopped treating them like they're anything more than glorified tabloid fodder and started questioning why on earth we're bankrolling this royal reality show. The scandals, the missteps, the sheer audacity of their demands, it's all too much. We need to reevaluate our priorities and ask ourselves if this is really where we want our money to go. The public's patience is wearing thin. More and more people are voicing their discontent, demanding accountability and transparency. The era of unquestioning reverence is over. It's time for a new chapter, one where the voices of the people are heard and respected. The monarchy has had its time, but the world is changing. We need leaders who understand the struggles of the common people, who are in touch with the realities of modern life. The royal charade has gone on long enough. It's time to turn the page and move forward. Imagine a future where our resources are invested in building a better society for everyone, where the focus is on progress and equality. It's not just a dream, it's a possibility. But first, we need to let go of the past and embrace the future. The royal family's costly charade has run its course. It's time for us to reclaim our power and build a future that truly reflects our values and aspirations. The time for change is now. Royal privilege amid national struggle, a tale of two economies. In a world where the gap between the haves and the have-nots seems to widen by the day, the contrast between the lives of the royals and the common folk has never been starker. Well, 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 what do we have here? Another tale of opulence and struggle, where the rich get richer and the poor, well, they just get poorer. Our dear King Charles, bless his jewel-encrusted heart, has just pocketed a cool £45 million pay rise. Yes, you heard that right, £45 million. It's almost as if the economic hardships faced by the rest of the country don't exist in his world. And did you hear the media uproar? No? That's because there wasn't any. The silence is deafening, isn't it? One would think such a significant pay rise would spark some debate, some outrage, but no, it's business as usual. Funny how that works, isn't it? The indifference, the apathy. It's almost as if we've become numb to the disparity, to the injustice while the rest of us are scrounging for pennies down the back of the sofa to keep the lights on, old Charlie's getting a windfall that would make a lottery winner blush. It's a stark reminder of the divide that exists, a divide that seems to grow wider with each passing day. But hey, who needs bread when you can have cake, right? It's a sentiment that seems to echo through the halls of power, a sentiment that leaves the rest of us wondering where our next meal is coming from. The deafening silence from the usual pay rise critics speaks volumes about the ridiculous deference still shown to these royal relics. It's almost as if they're untouchable, immune to the scrutiny that the rest of us face. 
it's almost like they're playing a game of how much can we get away with. A game where the rules are different for them, where the stakes are higher for us. While the rest of the country is playing how long until payday, it's a game of survival. A game where the odds are stacked against us, where the finish line seems to move further away with each passing day. But don't worry, I'm sure all that extra cash will trickle down to us peasants any day now, or not. It's a cruel joke, a bitter pill to swallow, but it's the reality we live in, a reality where the rich get richer and the rest of us are left to fend for ourselves. So as we navigate through our daily struggles, let's not forget the stark contrast that exists. Let's not forget the tale of two economies, a tale that continues to unfold, a tale that affects us all. Because at the end of the day, it's not just about the money, it's about the lives that are impacted, the dreams that are shattered, and the hope that is lost. It's about the people, the real people, who are caught in the crossfire of this economic disparity. But amidst the struggle, there is always hope. Hope for a better tomorrow. Hope for a fairer world. Hope for an economy that works for everyone, not just the privileged few. And that, my friends, is a tale worth telling. Royal extravagance in times of hardship. Well, well, well. It seems we have quite the spectacle on our hands. It seems our dear King Charles has been on quite the spending spree since he got the fancy new title. From grand galas to opulent ceremonies, the royal coffers are being emptied at an alarming rate. While the rest of us are pinching pennies and wondering if we'll be able to keep the lights on, the contrast couldn't be starker. Families are making tough choices, cutting back on essentials, and trying to stretch every pound. His Royal Highness is splashing out cash like it's going out of style. The lavishness of the events and the sheer amount of money being spent is enough to make anyone's head spin. And let's not forget, this isn't just any old money, it's taxpayer dosh we're talking about here. The hard-earned money of everyday citizens is being funneled into these extravagant displays. The sheer audacity of it all, the headlines scream of outrageous spending and the public's reaction is one of disbelief and anger. At a time when your average Brit is struggling to put food on the table, the disparity is glaring. Food banks are seeing unprecedented demand, and families are facing the harsh reality of financial insecurity. Meanwhile, the royal family is living it up in their gilded palaces, surrounded by luxury and opulence. The contrast between their world and ours is almost surreal. Seemingly oblivious to the financial hardships faced by the very people they're supposed to represent, the royals continue their extravagant ways. Protests are erupting, and the public's frustration is palpable. It's like they're on a different planet. One where the cost of living crisis is just a quaint little story they read about in the papers. The disconnect is staggering. One where the cost of living crisis is just a quaint little story they read about in the papers. The headlines tell a tale of economic struggle, but it seems to fall on deaf ears within the palace walls. Talk about being out of touch. The conversations happening in homes across the country are about survival, not splendor. The royal detachment from these realities is both shocking and disheartening. Historically, the monarchy has always had a certain level of grandeur, but in times of national hardship, there was an expectation of solidarity and understanding. Today, that expectation seems to be a distant memory. Interviews with citizens reveal a growing discontent. People are questioning the relevance and necessity of such extravagant spending when so many are struggling to make ends meet. In contrast, communities are coming together, supporting one another through these tough times. The spirit of resilience and solidarity is strong among the people, even if it seems absent in the royal halls. As the royal family continues to attend lavish events, the juxtaposition with the economic hardship faced by the public becomes ever more stark. The question on everyone's mind is, when will they wake up to the reality of the situation? Only time will tell if the royal family will adjust their ways and show the empathy and understanding that the nation so desperately needs. Until then, the divide between the royals and the rest of us remains as wide as ever. The crumbling crown time for a Republican revolution. Let's face it, darlings, the UK would be far better off ditching the royal circus and embracing a shiny new republic. The royal family, bless their privileged hearts, have their fingers in far too many pies through those cosy old school tie connections. It's like a posh puppet show pulling strings behind the scenes while the rest of us struggle to keep our heads above water. And don't even get me started on the obscene amount of taxpayer money we're flushing down the royal loo. Imagine if we redirected all those millions into actually supporting the people, you know, the ones who aren't born with silver spoons and golden thrones. 
it's high time we traded in our tiaras for a more democratic future, where influence is earned, not inherited, and our hard-earned cash goes towards making life better for everyone, not just funding another round of royal renovations.